Hello everybody, this is David with Frogger Part 2 of my VGA project. Um, this time I'm going to be talking about sprites, ROMs, and accessing the BRAM on the Arctic 7. So here's the breakdown from Part 1. Um, same slide, how I'm breaking it down. I'm using 32 pixel sections on here. 32, 64, multiples of 32. And here's the frog. Here's the frog that Atari drew. And I want to do more of an intricate frog like this. So, just as an example here. Um, if, you, if you watch the Pong video, then you'll see that we had a, a Pong ball ROM that was 8 by 8 bits. We had 8 addresses, 8 bits. And we had one ROM bit that turns on or off the color for the ball. Just one straight color. So that just required a ROM of 64 bits. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do for Frogger is I want to create a 32 by 32 pixel sprite. And so that means that each pixel has 12 bits of color data for the RGB that we're pushing through the DAC out the VGA connector. So that means we need a ROM that's 32 by 32 by 12 um, bits per pixel. So that's 12, over 12,000 bits for a ROM. Um, that's a lot, a lot of bits compared to this one over here, obviously, right? So um, the 32 by 32 is going to be 1024 addresses, and each address is going to have the 12 bits of color data. And instead of trying to type out a ROM by hand, so a long time ago when I was searching for um, Verilog stuff online, I found this website called embeddedthoughts.com. And he's got a lot of cool projects on here in Verilog and using the basis three and the basis two, I think, on a couple. But you scroll down here, he created his own video game too called Yoshi's Nightmare, which is really cool, which he has all the code for it on GitHub and, and it's on the basis three and you can check it out yourself. Which I haven't done yet, but I want to. But what we're interested... Oh, he also uses a Nintendo controller um, driver on here for the game, too. Just brilliant. I got a Nintendo controller and the hookups for that, too. I'm going to try that out as well. That's also going to be part of the Frogger game. But this is the project I'm most interested in right here, right? So storing image data in block RAM on a Xilinx FPGA. And so what he did, instead of... Um, so this is how you instantiate the block RAM on the Arctic 7. Um, and it kind of looks like this. And it ends up with this magic line right here. And how does he create his ROMs? Well, he created a brilliant um, Python file right here that will take in a bitmap image and convert it into your Verilog VHDL file. All you have to do is change the name of your bitmap right here and plug it in. There are some changes to it though, this function, and I'll explain that when I go through that this function no longer works and you have to make some changes to this code in order to get it to work. Okay, so here's that code open up in um, Notepad++ on my machine. Uh, credit to, he didn't have this stuff up here, I put this here, but credit to embeddedthoughts.com right there. And uh, the editor is myself. And these are the notes, these are the things I added. Just a couple things you need to change. This uh, SciPy, this uh, miscellaneous.read, like I talked about down here, this line is no longer valid because miscellaneous.read, I am read function is deprecated. So you, I researched that and found out just use the Im image IO, I am read. So Back up to the top, the first change in the file is just um, commenting out. This is what he had, importing SciPy, the, the MISC uh, library, and then just import right here, the image IO. And then you just need to change that line down here to this line right here with the image IO. You don't need this mode RGB. You just need the name that's going to come into the generate function here. Um, and then the only thing you do, this is his original line for a Yoshi bitmap. You just need to change the name of your bitmap and put it in here, run this Python file, and it will generate the Verilog ROM for you. And I'm going to show you that. But first, I'm going to show you my pixelated frog here. So I have a 32 by 32. It's, it's actually 28 by 28, but it's going to be used as 32 by 32 in the 
in the Verilog file. But this is the sprite I created right here based on that image that I found on the internet of the frog. This is my own version. And then, so what you can do is you go up here to more and you can export it. And you can export these as PNGs. So I exported one with him facing up. Then I went to the tools and then I rotated it. Say, uh, exported this one as left, down, right. So I have four pixelated frog PNGs. And um, so let me show you what you got to do next once you get your PNGs exported. All right, so once you've exported the PNG from that pixel art, that was a free pixel art studio, by the way, that you can get on Windows. Um, so what you do is you open it up in Paint, which also comes on Windows. And when you click on File, I don't know if you can see these pop-ups, but you scroll down to Save As, and then to the right you can save it as diff You can save it as a PNG, a JPEG, a bitmap, a GIF, and other formats. And then just click on Bitmap Picture, and it'll save your PNG from that Pixel Art Studio into the bitmap, which is the type of file that the Python program takes in. All right, here's a, a, a screenshot of my folder. For some reason, I can't capture the screenshot of my folder but um, in a video capture, but I can do it on a screenshot. So here's what I did. So I took all those bitmaps, right? I created the PNGs, exported them, opened them up in paint, create, uh, move, moved them into bitmaps, and then I took and just opened the Python file and changed the name of the bitmap that I wanted for each frog. I have frog up, down, left, right. And then it created the ROMs for each one. So let me show you what one of the ROMs looks like. All right, so here's the frog up ROM. It's just a simple ROM. We have a clock coming in and then these two, the row and column make up the address, but we're splitting it up between an X and a Y. So we have a row and a, a, row and a column. And then the output, which is the color data, which is 12 bits, which is our RGB values. And then here's that magic statement right there that um, tells the Vivado that you want to instantiate this on BRAM. Um, you want to use the block RAM on the FPGA and not the actual FPGA fabric for all of this bits of information. Um, so here's the signal decoration uh, declarations for row and column. Here's the clock, the row, whatever row comes in, it's like buffering it and from a wire coming in into a register. And then you're concatenating the row and the reg right here for the complete address to access each bit of information. Now notice right here, this value with all ones is a white, right? This is the background in the frog that's not the color of the pixel we want. This is like a green right here, right? RGB, so this is part of the frog. This is part of the background, and there, I'll show you in the Verilog code in my pixel generation circuit where I check for this value and turn it off so that we can have the, the not have the background of the frog showing. And with that, I'll take you to the code. All right, so here we are in Vivado. Over here, I have all the modules hierarchy. You can see you can see the modules up here. It's really just four Verilog modules and a constraint. It's the same VGA controller that I've used before. I'm not going to go through again. Um, the button to bounce. You'll be able to find this code on my GitHub, all of this. But the same button to bounce. And then the, the top module for everything is pretty much the same top we've all used before and stuff. The RGB buffer. Just a pixel gen circuit, the button debouncer, and the VGA controller. And the meat and potatoes right here, which is the pixel gen circuit. So let me show you what's going on here. So we have, you know, the clock, the reset, the four buttons up, down, left, right to control the frog. X and Y come from the VGA controller, the pixel locations. Video on means we're in the display area. And then I brought in, I didn't use the 25 megahertz pixel tick, but I'm bringing it in just in case for future. And then the output is the RGB. So that's it. You're just using a bunch of buttons to control RGB values. And so right here's the refresh tick, the same one you used before. It creates the 60 hertz refresh tick um, based on a pixel location, which is in the start of the V-Sync or vertical retrace area. Maximum values for the screen. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Here's the frog ROM boundaries. So, like I said, it was 28 by 28, but I'm gonna I'm gonna change that later on. But it's just 28 by 28. It's the frog size, just like we had a square size or square ball size before. Uh, and then this is where I want the the frog to start, which is in the center in the in the lower yellow section of the screen. 
Um, and then also set up some boundaries where the frog can't go. He can't go past the left green boundary, right green boundary. Can't go past where the homes in, are at the top. You know, when you reach a home, it's gonna the pixel will change to um, the uh, home frog there. I call it the home frog. And then also the bottom. You don't want them going in the bottom. You still need the boundaries, left, right, top, bottom. Here's the registers we're gonna begin at the starting locations. There's also register control right here for those. Um, so for reset, we'll, we'll put the frog back at the starting location. Otherwise, frog next is uh, becomes frog reg, and that's how we're buffering. Um, frog velocity is just set at four. Now this is just going to move the frog around the screen a little bit at a time, but in the eventual game, the frog will hop from spot to spot. And then here's the frog control down here. Um, no move right here and then if we every refresh tick if we get a up button down left or right with some other logic over here we don't want them to be able to move um, past our boundaries and that's all that's all controlled there and now for accessing the frog rom here's where i instantiate the frog roms down here so i got the up down left right there's four different roms now i need to feed it a row and a column to retrieve that rom data and so I create the five bits each for the rows and columns. So then this is how we give the value. It's pretty much just to obtain the column value, subtract the ROM left position, because we're tracking the left top position of our ROM. Um, from the, so you just subtract it from X. And then for the top value, you subtract it from Y. And then that's how you end up with your getting your row and columns for your, for your uh, ROM addresses. And so I create um, rows and columns for each one because I have four, four pieces of ROM data coming out. And I'm going to multiplex that later, I'll show you. But this, you still need these boundaries. So this is what sets up the left, top, right, and bottom boundaries based on the frog size, which is 28 by 28. We have the frog on uh, signal, which right here is when the pixel is within the square ROM boundaries. Here's the color values for all the backgrounds I'm using. Here's all the um, on signals, same one in part, same for, this is same for part one, just for the background right here. All the different sections and all their boundaries. Now here's where I multiplex the frog ROMs. So I have this wire of 12 bits, which is, is gonna carry the RGB data. Now the, there's four different RGB data. There's coming from uh, four different ROMs, an up, down, left, right ROM. So I need a, a two bit so I can do a frog select. So at the posage clock or reset, if frog, um, if reset, I'm gonna set frog select equal to zero, zero. And in this logic down here, so, I, so up is zero, zero, down is zero, one, left is two, right is three. And then, then I'm assigning the RGB for the frog ROM based on the value of this frog select and i'm using that frog select to select the rom data i want so if you push the up you're going to um, set the frog select value to zero zero and when you set the frog select value to zero zero you're reading from rom data one and if you remember back here where i instantiated rom data one is the frog up rom so i'm multiplexing four different roms to show the frog so he's facing the direction that you're pressing the button. And then the last part of this code is just uh, setting that RGB value. So if we're not video on, we're not in the display screen, we're just gonna send it no value. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, so for the frog, and, and like I talked about with the background, so right here I'm using this bitwise and operator from Verilog to check the frog ROM data for all ones. And if it is, and that means it's a white background and I don't want it to show. So I wanna show what's supposed to show underneath, which is the lower yellow, which is my color yellow for that. Otherwise, if if it's not that, that it's not the white, it means it's a green or yellow or another color that I want. So I want that data from the frog ROM to push to the RGB. And I just do the same thing for each area where the frog will be on and yellow within the boundary. So it's in the lower yellow, upper yellow, it can be on the street and it can be on the water. And later on I'll have to put in some stuff for when I add the logs and stuff that move in the water. And then everything else is just turning on those backgrounds. All right, and I um, already showed you the top. Here's the constraints file. We need the clock, the five buttons, the uh, RGBs. We have to pay attention to 
how the RGBs are are labeled because if you go back and look at the top of the Python file there's a note in there that says how the the bits are are present or come out in the ROM from the Python generation and that's our VGA connector and uh, I'll show you it working on the screen all right here it is on the screen hopefully you can see you can't really see the frog he's down here in the yellow he's starting and there he is he's moving up and you can see as I'm pushing right or left up or down the frog is facing the way I want him to go and so there you have the frog uh, jumping around like I said I have to change how he moves and stuff and then of course add pixels for and add uh, a lot more drawings for other things oh, the connection on here is messed up a little bit but there you go frogger jump around frogger part two thanks for watching